One experimental technique that often finds its way into narrative motion pictures is a superimposition. By juxtaposing images of Michael Corleone with his father at a similar age, we draw a comparison between the life choices of the two characters, and we feel the link that unites them. The overlap of two images creates a new image, a third shot. Superimpositions deepen the dreamlike quality of the scene and can be interpreted as adding meaning to the film. Paul Thomas Anderson uses dissolves that signal a major transition in the life of the main character. When two images are superimposed, the viewer has a natural tendency to draw some connection between them, even if no connection is intended. The feeling of these long, languid dissolves recalls Stanley Kubrick, where human faces melt into one another. But Anderson's are not as overtly symbolic as this example from The Shining. Setting the tone of the whole film, the slow dissolve shows Jack Torrance as the hotel, and the hotel is Jack Torrance. This scene from the last detail is on a moving train, and uses slow dissolves on an almost subliminal level. Jack Nicholson's Navy man is chastised for being too kind to the prisoner he is escorting to jail. As Nicholson looks down, we superimpose the two men, both looking forlorn. These characters may have been thinking about motion sickness, the lavatory, or cheese sandwiches, but because of the context, it feels like they are thinking, or at least existing, together. The filmmaker chose to use dissolves rather than hard cuts, and it ties into the nature of traveling, moving in a linear fashion from one place to another. This scene from Badlands evokes the couple getting swept away once they leave home for an uncertain future. When the possibilities of filmmaking were still being explored, superimpositions were used for expressive purposes. In 1936's The Great Ziegfeld, a theater producer has a hallucination on his deathbed. As the dancers step down his chin, his face seems to decompose in front of us. Clearly, this experimental technique has roots in avant-garde cinema and multiple exposures, yet it serves a narrative purpose. Inventive filmmakers from the 1930s saw the cinematic medium full of possibilities related to the photographic arts instead of theater. The newspaper montage made famous in the first half of the 20th century has become ubiquitous. Here Orson Welles uses images and headlines to tell the story of a singer's rise to prominence. This trope is rife for parody, as we've seen in Warren Beatty's Dick Tracy. The 1930s era of experimentation is alluded to in this adaptation of a popular period comic strip character. Here Beatty is clearly associating the character of Dick Tracy to fighting crime, but the written headlines are selling the message more than the visuals. Another common use of superimpositions is the travel montage, when great geographic distances are traversed in a compressed time frame. Influential films like John Ford's The Grapes of Wrath popularize this technique, adding aesthetic flourishes to an otherwise naturalistic film. The scene quickly accomplishes the kind of exposition that could take much longer in real time. Annie Get Your Gun has some particularly artful superimpositions that appeal to the senses. Bare feet in a bucket of water that seemingly has steam coming out of it, a woman seemingly sleeping underneath a moving train, and a locomotive bursting forward from an excited boy's face. These surreal touches reflect cinematic artistry on another level. The superimposition's relationship to travel keeps recurring throughout film history, showing up in period pieces that capture a retro feeling of the past. When many of these films came out, superimpositions were not as easily manipulated as they are now. A slow dissolve always has a beginning and an end, which mirrors the experience of watching a film, which is a linear event. Nowadays a film can be experienced backwards or forwards at the push of a button. Superimpositions can enrich the graphical beauty of a film, but it is more rare to find examples that are calculated and intentional cinematic statements. Jim Jarmusch uses them in Ghost Dog, where a sleeping man's dreams are evoked by a series of poetic dissolves. The examples we have seen were shot on film. For most of cinema history, movies were edited on flatbed machines that ran linear from beginning to end and end to beginning. One recent example stuns and fits into some of the best slow dissolves of all time. A young man leaves New York, falls in love, 
only to have the woman break his heart. How do you convey the myriad emotional connections? With this slow dissolve, you instantly create important story points.